Hello and welcome to another episode of My Retro Watches. Uh, what you can see in front of you is a little bit of a vintage um, Swiss watch. Um, by many people this is quite an iconic watch as well. It is the um, Zodiac Seawolf. And this was sent to me by a viewer and a member of the Facebook group, some guy I know. And he just asked me if I can have a look at it and see if perhaps I can get it going. Now I'm always hesitant about taking other people's work on. I only usually do watches that I'm very comfortable with. Um, however, uh, this looked to be interesting and I said, well, okay, I can't promise anything, but send it up and I'll give it an appraisal first of all. And then if I think I'm confident enough, I'll take it apart and see if we can get it running again. So here it is in front of me now. And uh, just to add um, more pressure to me, uh, the guy actually said, that this is one of his grail watches and um, I wish he hadn't have said that <laughs> uh, but then again we haven't gone into it yet uh, in fairness to him he did actually find this uh, in a charity shop or that's what he said uh, paid very little for it and of course it's looking pretty unloved and it's in non-working order as well so the plan is in this particular video is to show you some of the faults that I can see and then uh, disassemble the movement and perhaps you might find some more faults along the way. So looking at the uh, the watch, the first thing I noticed is the bezel uh, hardly moves at all. I've got to be careful because I've already taken the case back off. Um, I can free this up slowly, but originally it wouldn't move at all. Uh, but a bit more persuasion and it's starting to come loose. Uh, the other thing is the crown uh, just comes out. It will stay in with a bit of persuasion, um, but it doesn't stay in all the time. Uh, you are unable to move the hour and the minute hand even when the crown is in full position. It refuses to budge those. Um, and as you can hear, it whines, but it just constantly whines. There clearly is a spring. You can hear the crown springing back as I wind um, but it will just go on and on and on forever now this is an automatic watch um, so maybe it is just part of the automatic mechanism that uh, the spring is not it is slipping as it's it's designed to uh, but of course it's not running at all um, you can see here in the movement we've got some uh, corrosion to the uh, counterweight uh, but other than that inside looks pretty good um, so it's a case of dismantling this watch and trying to find out a little bit more about what might be going wrong with it it could be just that it needs a good service and we'll get it going again the uh, movement itself it just say something here I'm not sure if that's coming through on camera it's a 1624 and I believe that's an AS movement I'll confirm that once we uh, remove well I can just see it here actually we have the motif uh, it says AS um, so it should be a good uh, Swiss movement removing the case back uh, this was an early I think it was their first dive watch and one of the first dive watches out there as well um, so it has this v normal um, snap-on case back but it is particularly difficult to get it or I found it particularly difficult to get off and judging by the amount of marks around here Lots of other people have had uh, the same kind of difficulty. Um, in the case back itself, I have found three, well, definitely three confirmed service marks. Um, so it has been loved over the years, um, but it is quite old and it's probably well overdue a service. So I think the first thing to do is to remove the uh, strap, take the crown out and get the movement out. And then we can start um, with the disassembly. Now it's also the uh, first time I've been inside one of these particular movements as well so I'm taking you on the journey with me um, so I have only a rough idea of how this one is put together um, but I just follow the same usual uh, pattern that I do for disassembly which is first to decase the movement and then I'll remove the hands and remove the dial and go from that way first strip it back to the main plate on the dial side and then flip it over and uh, eventually take the the movement part out um, so to actually remove it from the case 
this uh, watch has got two screws one here and one here and they should just undo quite easily this one is already undone by this by the looks of things so perhaps somebody's already had this out and not put it back in properly and I haven't got that, undone that one all the way Now I'm not wearing figure cuts uh, at this stage um, because I'm going to be cleaning the movement so there is no point I feel other than I might wear them when I get to the dial. So those are removed. I'll just see if it's got a movement ring. It's hard to tell. Okay, so I've just learned that the, uh, the movement um, shims here that hold it in um, have to be removed and of course they're not very easy the first one was a bit of a, a struggle and I'm going to struggle with this one as well so I'll just take that off okay the uh, movement is out of the case and um, you can see here the dial hasn't fared too well over the years it's quite um, rough that loom is gone on the hands and certainly on the indices as well it's uh, faded away and actually lost some of its minute markers as well but that makes no difference it's still a good watch and still worth saving now I am a little bit worried about these hands I'm not sure if that's coming through but they do look a bit tarnished like there's a bit of rust and because uh, they don't move uh, certainly with the crown in place uh, that does concern me a little bit uh, so I'm going to have to be very careful about how I take these off um, so I am going to try and cover the dial with my um, my my protector and I'm going to try and pry them off and uh, if I'm honest I'm going to do that just off camera uh, purely because I need my uh, sight uh, to do that and because this is somebody else's watch I'm always a little bit paranoid of making a mistake for the sake of the film. So just bear with me and the next you'll see is the hands have been removed. Okay, to my relief they came off uh, remarkably easy. Um, there is, however, you can probably quite clearly see it there, some tarnish and some rust. So it does worry me a little bit um, that obviously condensation's got in at some point. Um, just for those regular followers, if I just move this out of the way, um, I've invested in this, uh, which is a different type of hand puller. Uh, I've been using, if I can find it, uh, this sort of Presto one, and I've actually got a new one of those coming as well. Uh, but I bought this um, on eBay, and I've polished, highly polished the ends. I haven't got enough reach on my camera for it to focus. and. This is pretty cool because uh, all you do is you push this button on the top and it opens the claws. So you would open this, uh, put it over the bottom of the hands, close it, and then you push down. And that pushing down, as you can see, creates it to lever up and it pulls the hands up and it takes them off nice and easy. And the reason I've polished the bottom is purely because um, the smoother they are, the less likely they are to scratch anything. Of course, I use a cover as well, or a little protector, uh, one of these. Um, but that is just extra insurance, really. And to be fair, when they came, they were in a really poor state. I think somebody had been pulling out uh, cannon pinions with them. Um, so I've restored these. Really good investment. I see these quite often. And I think as well, there's now a more modern uh, remake of these as well. So could be a worthwhile investment to your bench uh, if you are looking for a different type of tool to remove hands with. So back to the matter at hand. Right, I've uh, just put the crown back in this time uh, because uh, once we get the dial off we can have a look at the keyless works and perhaps we can see why that is not working because if I uh, engage the um, crown 
it just freely turns as you can see uh, so something is wrong within the keyless and um, also on inspection again when I am looking at the top of the hour wheel here and that there is more corrosion so it could be the case that there's the the stoppage of the watch is around the cannon pinion area and perhaps there is some rust inside but there'll only be one way to find out and that will be to remove this dial and um, we need to look for dial feet and I've already done that uh, and we have some very small screws there is one just here and I might need my smallest screwdriver and we'll just loosen that one off and there's another one I think here and again we just loosen that one and then we'll see if I can gently now pry the dial up perhaps if I put it down there now uh, another good practice to do is to make sure that you then retighten those feet uh, or those screws sorry because uh, when it goes into an ultrasonic if that's what you're going to use to clean the ultrasonic has a tendency to vibrate those screws out and on this watch they are exceptionally small so um, they'll be easily easily lost so let's have a look inside and see if there's anything obvious that I can see that's wrong and other than a bit of dirt to my naked eye I can't really see much we can hear that that is winding Uh, but clearly the uh, clutch is not engaging um, with the intermediate wheel. I'm presuming there's an intermediate wheel under there that would then be driving the minute wheel. Um, so let's get stuck into that and remove all of those components. Okay, so we have a little uh, dial shim to remove first. And I'll just see, that really does seem quite tight. Um, however, we will um, remove the keyless, or remove this part first. So as you're seeing my fingers, um, I really need to set up a different camera angle. And I'm not doing very well here because the uh, screw is still not completely out. Uh, if any of you are new uh, to the channel, uh, please don't forget. If you don't know already, I am not a professional. I am just uh, a hobbyist like many of you guys and I'm learning as I go along. I just like to film it and put it on the internet for people to watch and maybe learn uh, or learn through my mistakes so this screw is causing me a little bit of a headache it seems no matter how many times I turn it it doesn't want to come out it's definitely loose uh, and finally with a bit of persuasion and then would you believe <laughs> that there's a little hole in the case there and that's exactly where it's fallen you could bank on that, could you? However, we'll continue to so remove this cover plate. Now we can see um, the problem. Uh, so that is um, straight away. That's a catastrophe. Uh, we're going to need some parts, and I'm not sure straight away uh, how I'm going to find those parts. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Uh, I am tempted to perhaps try and either do a close-up or put it on the microscope. So you have this sort of intermediary or this drive wheel that the, the clutch hits to engage with the minute wheel here. And that has lost all of its teeth in this area. So I'd guess that the minute wheel is um, 
seized along with the hour wheel which I should just lift off and it's not lifting off so I'm guessing that that's seized or that's seized and the force of somebody turning the crown to turn the hands has just broke all the teeth off the minute wheel so that is a bit of a disaster uh, it could be a common part within these movement range I might be able to find it uh, but otherwise it could require a donor movement so um, not ideal has to be said at this stage uh, so I'll need to um, see first of all if I can free uh, these uh, components up and um, as you, this really should just lift off and I'm very worried that that is completely seized on uh, so I'll just have a quick look at that and see if there's a way for me to um, grab hold of it better maybe a little pin vice or something see if I can grab it and pull it that way okay so off camera I just removed that little uh, drive wheel there and I could find that the minute wheel would move ever so slightly um, but the hour wheel needed the pin vise so I just put the pin vise on it and um, gently uh, tightened it up and pulled it and that was enough for it to come off uh, I will need to inspect that um, a lot closer see if I can get this in focus for you uh, to make sure that any all those teeth are okay uh, however the minute wheel uh, is no more and I may struggle getting that off as well let's have a quick look with some roddy coat no so that's um, That's quite stuck as well. At least we know that the part is um, scrap. So I guess it doesn't matter too much how it comes off, just as long as it does come off. And if I can't free it up enough, then it'll certainly come off uh, in the in the wash. Uh, perhaps I'll just try and uh, remove the uh, cannon pinion. Uh, to remove can opinions I tend to just use tweezers uh, I'm almost banking on this one being stubborn as well because I can see from this angle that there's a lot of rust so I get a bigger pair of tweezers I'm just going to bite it at the bottom and that is absolutely solid so that's not good either so I'm going to need to try and persuade those off um, so I think what I'll do um, while we're here is first of all just remove the um, the rest of the keyless some of these screws are particularly tight Once again this one I really do need to put the movement in a holder now and um, try and get those out okay sorry for the uh, cutting out and um, cutting back in again um, I've had to wrestle with that a little bit and you can see why there is a lot a lot of rust underneath that and hopefully if we get into focus there we go you can see that we're missing quite a lot of the teeth on that um, so that's been seized for some time and people have been trying to turn the crown and it's tore them off over there and over here so that one is completely scrap uh, the can opinion is still um, giving me a little bit of grief too uh, so i'm going to leave that one on just for the time being and i'll remove the rest of the keyless works so i'll just loosen this screw off finally so this is turning out to be quite a challenge already and we've only got uh, the calendar or well, the dial side off not the calendar side there's no calendar works on it so remove the setting lever spring 
and then we've got a shepherd's crook type um, spring to remove and I'm let me just get a bit of Rodico in there just in case sorry I did that a bit uh, off the camera again so I remove the spring and then we have the yoke absolutely everything is being really stubborn but then it's obviously got water ingress at some point and that's caused all these problems I'm not a big fan of levering parts um, Now this is another one that's not wanted to to come out and I will actually just turn it over because I've got a feeling this is the reason why yeah the parts just dropped onto my fingers should have thought of that so that's the setting lever and then out comes the um, drive wheel and the clutch so we'll need to examine the clutch as well uh, because of all the teeth that we're missing the question with them will be sorry so I think I'll put these on the scope so we can see them closer um, you can get something from that uh, but there we are that is the um, dial side done minus that cannon pinion which I'm gonna have to have a little bit of a think on I might even put a little touch of oil uh, on that uh, obviously we're going to wash it so it shouldn't matter too much but it might just help to uh, free up that bit of rust uh, just before we uh, go onto the scope uh, I just thought I'd say that I got my smaller pin vise and the cannon pinion which you can't see because it's not focusing uh, is in the end of here that's come off quite successfully uh, so I'm quite pleased with that because uh, it's always the worry that the cannon pinion is uh, stuck fast. I've had that before today. Uh, anyway, I'm going to put it all on the scope. You can see just the extent of the rust that we were dealing with. Okay, so here we are under times 20 magnification. And um, you can see the extent of the rust. So there's quite a lot, especially on that um, post there for the minute wheel. Um, trying to find something to to indicate with so there is a lot of rust there uh, however uh, I got a good feeling that that will um, clean off the next concern is let's just get that in focus so you can just see the top there of the cannon pinion where the um, the fourth wheel comes through that drives the second hand and that is quite extensively rusted on the top <coughs> excuse me and um, it might clean up with a bit of polish uh, it just depends on what actually the um, fourth wheel is like as well because that could be rusted all the way through I mean, we'll only find that out when we remove it if we look at the rest of the case well it's it's bashed around a bit the jewel looks okay just a bit cloudy so it's obviously got some dirt in there uh, these all look okay so clearly to me here we go into the keyless area sorry the autofocus is going crazy um, again you can see a bit more rust there so I would hazard a guess that that's where the moisture has managed to get in and it's worked its way over to here and caused all that damage and this uh, I have no doubt really that this is uh, what is stopping this watch it just depends now whether it is carried on through into the other side of the movement and in which case that will of course havoc in there as well so we can only have our fingers crossed that it hasn't uh, so i'll now just um, set up the parts that we've removed and you can have a good look at those okay here we are looking at times 20 on the microscope um, at the minute wheel and as you can see 
quite clearly we have teeth missing down here and we have lots of teeth missing over there coupled with all the, the rust that you can see uh, so quite clearly in my opinion what's happened is the cannon pinion has got um, stuck and the whoever the owner was turning the crown uh, the crown turns the intermediate wheel or the drive wheel which turns the minute wheel which engages with the cannon pinion and because one of them stuck they've turned a bit too hard and of course the teeth have sheared off this um, minute wheel which is a travesty um, but we'll see if we can get one I've got a good feeling uh, that I'll be able to find something on the internet so in light of that we need to inspect uh, all those other parts as well so I'm going to bring in the um, the drive wheel I don't know the actual terminology of, of what this is and it's annoying me now because it's decided to get stuck to my tweezers as well so I can't keep it in one place um, now I mean just looking at it from this angle you know the uh, teeth all look okay to me I will inspect it a bit more uh, like this as well uh, but I'll probably do that a bit later on uh, the hour wheel uh, so here's the hour wheel and as you can see that is pretty dirty uh, but I've got a good feeling that will clean off with some um, a good um, solution in the ultrasonic and then through the the machine uh, the watch cleaning machine that should come up quite nicely uh, the teeth do look okay from from this visual at least I guess we really need to clean it and inspect it again afterwards uh, I also want to have a quick look at the clutch because uh, as well this takes a lot of the um, the drive so all that force will have gone through here and we're just a little bit out of focus there aren't we? because I've sticked it up on the end and just a quick glance at those teeth they don't look too bad there's a showing a bit of wear also the light as you can see is reflecting quite badly there's something sticky on my tweezers surely um, so no cause for alarm there and then the last thing is going to be the cannon pinion and here is the cannon pinion once again stuck to the tweezers so I think I need to just clean my tweezers uh, so what we can see the light is not great here as it is there's quite a bit of gunk on the side let's just see if I can tilt that up on its end and offer it under the scope here that's going to be really tricky to do so let's try it this way so we're on a funny angle as well but it does just looks very dirty to me and on that side let's see if I can hold it and bring that in I'm going the wrong way yeah so no obvious damage there other than uh, needs de-rusting and a good clean so good news um, those parts might be salvageable just concerned actually when I look at that whether there's some damage to the top there it really is oops it really is hard to uh, to see uh, from this angle so I might do that a bit uh, a bit later on possibly after the first clean so I think for now we'll just uh, set back up and start uh, the uh, disassembly of the actual uh, train side and see if there's any faults in there okay so I've removed the uh, rotor and just looking at the movement as itself if I just wobble it you can see that the balance is moving quite freely and when I looked at that under a loop uh, the uh, hairspring looks quite good um, so no problems there however the problem I have noticed and it was a problem that I noticed and I think I said it at the start of the video is that you could just wind this watch it seems like there's some tension in the spring but it just keeps winding and winding and winding but once I've decased it and I um, try and apply some wind let's see if you can I have to listen out for a a noise So you can hear that click I know you can't see it because my my fingers are in the way um, let's see if I can do it that way 
but there's also a knocking sound on every click right there that was my screwdriver this time there there so that is uh, odd indicates that there's something wrong in the barrel it could be the arbor's not engaging with the the hook on the hairspring um, or there's something wrong with the barrel uh, the, the bridle on the barrel wall um, when I try and let down any tension so you what you would do on this is you just wind it to um, again you're not going to see it because I haven't got the other camera set up I have to move the uh, click out the way so all the tension could come off and there isn't any it doesn't want to unwind at all uh, which suggests to me that that click is just basically not putting any any tension into the spring um, so if that was uh, okay and we could wind it up perhaps the watch would actually run who knows because you know at the top at least on this side everything looks quite good so i'm going to try to uh, disassemble this side um, it is really in the journey of the unknown for me i've not done one of these before uh, but it looks pretty much like the standard procedure for um, a manual wind watch so i'm going to start uh, by removing the screw here and this will be a left-handed screw and uh, that's come off and dropped a little washer on the screw with it so that came off alarmingly easy I'll just get those out of the way and then we need to remove the ratchet wheel and the uh, click and there will be a spring I'm guessing under there somewhere so I have to be a little bit careful course this actual uh, cover plate uh, is obscuring that so I don't want to uh, try and force that out just yet so um, I think what I'll do is actually put the screw back in for safety and remove that uh, bridge okay this bridge looks like it's got three screws one here one here and one here so we will tackle the screws off uh, on that and uh, remove the bridge okay I've removed the screws uh, I did that now without have you having to see my fingers and there is just a little um, slot just there which will be or I'm assuming will be for um, leverage like so to remove this train train wheel bridge and I was kind of hoping there was one on this side but there isn't that side's quite rusted up. And I don't want to force anything, but I do feel that the rust might be playing into my hands just a little bit here. As soon as I've got it, um, I've knocked it back in. So there we have one train bridge uh, with a little um, cover plate here, which is for the auto wind. So I'll have to remove that as well uh, for when it comes to cleaning. But for now, we'll continue uh, with the strip down of the main parts. Uh, so we can see inside the train there. And uh, it all looks quite nice so I'll go back to removing the ratchet wheel and now that should 
left clear. And it was under tension and um, as you can see it's ran across the table. So once again, my uh, lack of professionalism is shining through in abundance right now. Um, so this is the uh, spring that was holding it on. And uh, I'll have to now remove that. Okay, I've moved the uh, screw for the click. And then we'll lift off the click itself. And then there is a uh, spring in this plate and I've seen these sort before so it'll hook around and just need to be careful at how we try and take that out. And that one decided to fly as well, but here it is. Uh, I should have secured it with some more Rodico, but I'm at a rather strange angle uh, trying to film. So there we go, that's the spring uh, taken away. And now we can concentrate on the next part, which will be taking out the train wheel bridge. All right, I removed the uh, screws off camera. There is one here, one here, and one here. These two are longer than the small one here. And now the train bridge should just lift straight off. And again, I just want to be careful so as not to damage anything, uh, but there we are. So now we're looking at the inner workings of the train. Um, and through the camera here, I can't see anything that uh, looks uh, particularly alarming. Uh, so we'll go ahead with the removal of the wheels. And uh, the fourth wheel here straight away seems very uh, seized indeed. So that will be an issue because of the rust on the cannon pinion. And another indication that this movement, um, or why this, this watch stopped running, should I say. So I'm a little bit worried about that. I'm just going to have to have a little look and a bit closer look and see if there's any uh, way of freeing that up. Okay, uh, my initial uh, thoughts were that this should just lift straight out, which is uh, normal for one of these, um, well, for a fourth wheel, uh, from my experience. However, I thought it was seized. Thing is, if I turn it, it's not. It's got plenty of movement. It just won't come up, and I think that's because the uh, barrel and this uh, plate that holds the barrel in place uh, may be engaged in such a way that that's uh, preventing it from remove, being removed. So I'll undo these two screws, remove this uh, bridge here, and um, hopefully by the removal of the barrel, we can then get that, um, that wheel out. Okay, so I've uh, undone the screws for that. And then we're hoping that just lifts straight off, which it does. And then the barrel should be uh, released. And there we go, we get to see a little bit more underneath. I'll come back to the barrel later. Uh, so that's interesting. It has another little drive wheel here. Uh, I've not seen that before. I'm actually quite curious as to what that's actually driving. Um, so anyway, let's see. And uh, no, no, that's still very much stuck. How interesting and how bizarre. I'm going to have to have yet another look at it. Um, and all of this mechanism here. So <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, you guys are sitting there watching this, probably cringing. Um, uh, this is definitely a bit more of an unusual movement than I thought it was going to be. Uh, certainly with these... Uh, uh, wheels here and uh, interesting at the same time so I'm going to take a closer look at that mainly again to get rid of this fourth wheel because we can't do anything until we get the fourth wheel out 
Okay, a bit of further investigation, and um, there's all kinds going wrong. Um, the it turns out that the center wheel uh, was jammed underneath as well, and um, I've had to turn the movement upside down and clean with um, a releasing agent because of the rust and things. So, the, so I used some releasing agent and a fiber brush just to sort of clean some of the, the, the tarnish and the rust off. And I can now move with my tweezers gently the um, center wheel. However, they're still not gonna come out and uh, I don't wanna force the issue. So I'm gonna remove the balance uh, and get the escape out there as well and potentially move these two, which I've now worked out as well, by the way, that these, of course, are all part of the um, automatic works. Uh, so the way it's winding um, is uh, the rotor's winding via a gear and it will turn this and of course this is then turning the barrel so it's quite interesting setup really um, so i'm going to try and remove as much as i can and uh, let this uh, soak in a bit more uh, worst case scenario is i'll wash them in situ so i'll put it through the ultrasonic and see if that frees it up the last thing i want to do right now is force any of these wheels because I can break them or I'll damage them and at this stage as I'm filming I don't know if I can replace them so um, caution is needed so I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, escape wheel and as I say the other components and then I'll show you again the results that we find at the end of that okay join me uh, a little bit later on now uh, for the last at least 30 minutes I've been um, wrestling with this thing and um, using the releasing agent which I will actually tell you which one that is because I forgot to tell you I use uh, this stuff called plus gas and um, fast release dismantling lubrication it is a little bit like uh, WD-40 although it is purpose made to release um, stubborn parts probably mainly for cars and industry, but I'm using it on the watch. And the um, as it turns out, the center wheel here was okay. It was turning uh, fairly freely. However, the minute uh, wheel, or the fourth wheel, not the minute wheel, I'm getting everything confused. <laughs> so the fourth wheel that was sitting on the top uh, was actually seized inside. So it could move a little bit, um, but I think the rust um, has, affected inside and it's probably rusted the center wheel i haven't taken that off yet uh, inside and it wouldn't come out and it took a long time of very very gentle persuasion and kept on putting the lubricant on and eventually uh, it came out and here it is um, so what we will do is i'll strip the rest of it down we'll put this part and several other parts on the microscope and we can see the extent of the damage of those uh, and see if they're going to be recoverable or not of course i'm not too sure um, i have uh, now been informed that um, some parts from a i think it's an as 1580 um, are very similar or if not exactly the same as the parts in here which is um, very good because it means that those parts are available at the moment at cousins so we can potentially buy uh, new old stock parts um, and get this thing going again so i'm going to carry on um, as I say, removing the parts. So the third wheel we now know will lift out nice and easy. Um, to get to the center wheel, we have this little bridge. And to remove this bridge, we have two simple screws. Um, so actually, because I'm fed up of getting my fingers in and I still haven't set up the other camera, I'm just gonna do those um, off the camera and then we'll remove the center wheel. Okay, those screws are out and this train bridge should just pick up. Um, does, again, look a bit um, dirty around the, the jewel hole there, but equally, that's also where I've been plying loads of oil. Uh, so there is the center wheel and hopefully, yep, that is just gonna lift out quite nicely. Again, we can't really see anything until we get look a bit closer on the, the microscope. Uh, so we're nearly back to the plate. Uh, it's just this, um, the automatic works uh, that need to be removed and uh, this is quite a new thing for me I've not seen it set up like this before 
but then as uh, if you if you're regular to the channel you know that um, I've mainly done Seikos and once again we've got a really stubborn screw so I'm going to wrestle with that one now right that's the uh, screw taken care of and we just then need to try and lift these parts out like so and then hopefully this one here will come out and it does and we've actually got I don't know whether you can see that in the light um, some oil now I, I am curious actually whether that is the oil from the releasing agent and it's sort of just traveled to there or whether that is actually some existing oil um, I think it must be the um, the releasing oil because um, this thing has been dry as a bone all the way through anyway there we are we're back to the main plate so let's uh, inspect those parts a little bit closer and just see the extent of the damage all right let's start with a quick examination of the uh, main plate now it's all nice and uh, stripped down and as you can see there that's the where the center wheel was sitting and um, you know that's really just a dried releasing agent there more than anything else um, just try and have a quick look at some of these jewels just make sure that they are not cracked and so far so good other than a lot of uh, dirt now this is the um, where the barrel well not the barrel the, the well the sort of the uh, ratchet I guess underneath the barrel to wind it was sitting and to be fair I don't think that is the releasing agent I think that is actually the uh, oil from one of the previous services so that's um, stayed intact uh, anyway I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing here mainly because the jewels don't look cracked uh, because that means that they will uh, be cleaned quite a lot and just trying to turn it over sorry um, okay on the other side I think we've already done this side to be fair um, but once again now it's all back to bare metal everything looks okay now you'll, you'll see what they look like scratches some of those won't be there'll be bristles from the uh, fiberglass pen that I used so yeah okay perfectly happy with the main plate well I'm not happy it's going to take a lot of cleaning um, but um, you know it looks like it's going to be usable so let's go and inspect those parts right here is the uh, fourth wheel uh, or the, the second uh, wheel if you like and uh, this is obviously the wheel that the, the second hand sits on and I've just used a bit of old Rodico there to try and prop it up because what we're looking at here is where it was all well where it still is whoops uh, it, it all really rusted up isn't it um, the two sort of lumps you can see they should be there um, but the rest of it um, is horrible really is horrible so we'll have to try and see how well uh, the cleaning methods um, cope with that that's ironically I did try and put it back through the center wheel and it doesn't like it so I'm more inclined to believe that there'll be more corrosion inside the center wheel than there is on here um, so that's not particularly great I think if we just turn it upside down and try and get it in the into focus And just look at the teeth, uh, just to make sure that all, at least at this brief stage, yeah, all the teeth seem to be intact, and the leaves down here, apart from being really dirty, are okay. Right, so center wheel. I have a similar sort of problem trying to get this into uh, focus. Uh, I don't know whether we're going to be able to look down that hole at all. I mean, we've got a white base on the microscope here, and you would assume we would see. Um, just trying to again wind this thing up, and I can't see anything. Sorry for the blur, guys. Obviously, I'm doing this always as always, doing everything on the fly and um, it doesn't always work that well so if we turn it over this side looks awful 
I won't lie. Um, whether that's dirt or rust, I think it's a bit of a combination of everything. So yes, that doesn't look too healthy at all, does it? Let's face it. So it could be that it needs at least, well, we know it needs the minute wheel from the other side, and it might look like now it needs the centre wheel and the fourth wheel. Uh, I'm not worried about the third wheel. That seemed to be completely unaffected. So I keep trying to get this in the right angle. It's not really working, is it? So we can assume that that has seen better days. I might have a very small brooch. Uh, might be able to put up there. It's difficult. Um, I've got a very small brooch, but I don't think it's that small. Uh, so that's those. The final component that I wanted to look on the microscope was the mainspring. Uh, but I've been thinking about this and um, I don't think the problem, as much as well, I was hearing that click at the start, I don't think the problem was in the main, I mean, look at that, that looks awful, doesn't it? Uh, it's the first time I've seen this other than taking the cover off a minute ago. Um, that is, is that the spring or is that, that's just grease, isn't it? Um, I think what it was is that the, the whole um, barrel mechanism is obviously tied in with the train of wheels and because the train of wheels is seized the sort of clicking and everything else could be just an effect of that um, i'm not seeing a breakage in here uh, this would normally be engaging onto there so i can try and put the lid on and turn it with a um, pin vise that might give me an indication i mean the main thing is really is just to remove it and clean it first of all and try it and make sure that it is going under tension correctly so that's going to be another epic clean in there as well so I, at the moment in time now that the, the watch is actually broken down into its uh, parts uh, i think i should really end this video it's been the usual ad hoc video i don't think it's again any of my best works at all i'm not really um, showing you how to do anything on this one it is literally filming as i go along for the very first time into a watch movement like this one and finding the faults and the difficulties that lie in front of me in order to see if we can get this one back into um, service. Uh, it's going to be a challenge and I'm not going to guarantee anything at this stage because I don't like rust. Um, <laughs> you know, certainly rust on some of the key components like that will, will make it run like a dog if it would run at all. Um, so the quest is on to make sure I can replace these components first of all, uh, but I will give them a clean. So I think in the next video, um, We'll either do the assembly video or I'll do a little short one on how the parts came out after cleaning. Um, we can, you know, compare um, the methods and whether it's actually shifted any of that rust or not. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to end this one here. So if you've stuck with this one to the end, as always, well done. Uh, <laughs> thank you very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy it. Um, please uh, leave a like if you've got any questions if you could help me in any way give me some advice uh, leave it all down in the comment section below I'd be absolutely grateful of that um, so catch you very soon in the next video which hopefully will be a bit more of a positive one than this bye for now